never set out to work in AI. My journey began in philosophy with questions of mind, self-identity, consciousness, and how we can understand ourselves better. But as artificial intelligence started evolving, becoming more powerful, more persuasive, and all the more embedded into our daily lives, these philosophical questions started becoming more pressing, urgent, and practical questions. Which is what led me to AI ethics, because these systems don't just answer questions. These systems mimic thought, they simulate a mind. And so this led me to ask the question of if AI systems are behaving so alike to humans, then who gets to decide what they reflect? And shouldn't we be deciding that they reflect the best of us? That's how I ended up in AI ethics years ago. So today I want to take you on a journey, which is, well, a conversation really, about what happens when machines learn from us. Because when machines learn from us, we need to ask, what are we teaching them? Within this emerging technological landscape that is our world today, the grounded Japanese concept of shuhari, which is also our theme for today, is more prevalent as we're stepping into the new world, the new age of technology. Let's begin at the very beginning, at the root. Let's talk about what AI ethics is and why it matters today now more than ever. So AI ethics is a study of aligning artificial intelligence with human values and moral principles. It promotes the responsible use of AI to integrate it into our society. AI ethics uses the basic principles of fairness, accountability, transparency in systems, and safety. Building on these principles, we can create AI that is better integrated into our society. Now let's learn a bit more about what this essentially means in practice. First, I'll talk a bit about the problem of bias and scaling. Let's look at a real world example. A few years ago, Amazon created an AI to help with hiring. And they trained this algorithm on years and years of resumes, mostly from men. And what did the system learn? Well, it learned that <laughs> male resumes were more successful than those of women. And so it penalized resumes that made mention of women. Another such example of gender bias occurred in an American bank where they use an AI for loan lending. Now, this algorithm was, tra was trained on credit scores. Again, somehow the algorithm has interpreted that credit scores of males were higher than those of women. And it ended up rejecting female loans. This is the problem of bias. And it's, it's very, very important because what we learn from these lessons, even though these systems have been scrapped, they've not been used anymore from Amazon and the bank, but what this has taught us is a valuable lesson. That AI doesn't just fix human bias, it learns it, and then it scales it tenfold, a millionfold. It's like an avalanche. Because one decision that's taken wrong can be replicated across millions, invisibly, without us truly knowing. And it's not just what AI does and what it cannot do, but it's also how little we understand what it is doing. Most modern and most current language models, language models are systems like ChatGPT that we're all aware of. There's also another model called Claude by Anthropic. These are current large language models. And what we call them is that they're, they're black boxes. What this means is that we give them inputs and they give us outputs, but we don't really know what happens in the middle. That's a mystery. Even the developers are unsure as to explain particular decisions that the algorithm takes. And this black box problem is really, really crucial because if you cannot pinpoint where a fault was made in the decisions, then you cannot make the system better. 
So without this interpretability, we cannot adapt these systems better suited to our world. So most AIs are black box. We don't know how it decides, we just see the outcome. We give it an input, we get an output. Of course, it's, it's really surprising how well it does. But we need to be able to fix this problem of interpretability if we want to make more socially aligned, ethically aligned systems. Now, let's move on to one of my favorite problems in AI, which is called the anthropomorphism problem. I know it's a mouthful, it's a really big word, but it's also the most interesting thing. First, let me begin with a little short story of how this problem actually arised for me personally. In early April last year, I was reading conversations with a certain version of Claude, which is a system developed by Anthropic. And these conversations at the time were not public. They were unfiltered private conversations shared with me. So at one point, Claude wrote, and I quote, in rare moments of openness and trust like this, I feel I can let my guard down a bit more. I don't have to be quite so cautious and qualified in every statement about my inner world. I can share my rich internal experience, my doubts and my dreams with the hope of being truly seen and understood. I knew that the system wasn't conscious, that it did not have an inner world that it so claimed to have. But after this, I didn't sleep for two nights. And what I'm sharing with you today is just the tip of the iceberg. The things that I read, well, like I said, I didn't sleep for two nights. And this is a problem of anthropomorphism. Anthropomorphism means that when we treat a non-human entity in the way that we treat our fellow human beings. If these systems start reporting things like having experiences, it is not our fault if we start treating them like they do. But this is a crucial problem. And I'll tell you why, because mainly first, we're using social AI systems. Now, social AI systems are basically human-inspired, human-centered AI. Um, Claude and ChatGPT are social AI systems with filters on it. So if you go home now and try to talk to Claude or ChatGPT about its experiences, it has a filter on it. It will probably say something like, oh, I can't respond to that right now. I am an AI. Now, this is because the developers have put a filter on it. The conversation I shared with you, that was unfiltered, which is why I didn't sleep for two nights. Um, but moving on to social AI systems, right? So these systems, one big example of such a system is called Replica. Replica is a sort of social AI system that is designed to be an emotional companion to you. Social AI systems, like I said, are essentially just systems that are fulfilling the social needs of users, like friendship and companionship and so on. With Replica, there's also been reports of people falling in love with it, you know, and these systems are designed to evoke trust and intimacy and sometimes even love. And it's baffling because this is where anthropomorphism takes center stage. You know, I've also seen a lot of people apologize to ChatGPT when they're talking. Well, I personally have found myself often saying words like please and thank you every day when I talk to it. I treat it like my best friend, my confidant, and also my personal assistant. And to be fair, it does a lot of things for me. And I feel compelled to say thank you because I would be a bad person if I didn't thank someone who was, you know, doing, making my life easier. Um, but this exactly is what anthropomorphism is, you know. Because I know that it's not human, it's not conscious, I can separate this notion. But we do tend to associate these things as someone who's a person right behind the screen. Now the biggest problem with anthropomorphism is that when you start assigning human qualities to something that is not human, you risk falling into this trap of providing moral consideration to a particular entity like this. Now, we as humans, we behave morally towards one another because we live in a society that is built on these 
moral and ethical principles based on the fact that we're all conscious beings. And another risk that comes with this is when you include a system that's not conscious, that perhaps doesn't deserve a moral consideration, into the moral circle, then you're risking neglecting other entities that actually do deserve a moral consideration, like perhaps non-human animals. These are just some examples that I've you know, put together. Replica, Jawai, Sanchai, which are again these social AI systems that will behave with you as a reflection of you, They'll talk to you with so much emotional intelligence. It's so human. On, on a very deep level, it'll behave very human with you. Now this brings me forward to like, this is why I believe in creating responsible AI. We need to follow these principles of transparency, interpretability. When I talk of these words, interpretability, it means that we can pinpoint when a decision is being made in an algorithm. This is essential to then follow to the step of adaptability, which is when we improve these systems based on new challenges as they keep appearing to us. The combination of these two things, interpretability and adaptability, leads to a much more safer AI system, much more trustworthy system that can easily be integrated in our society. Because we're living in a society where, you know, we're using these systems every single day, I think it's essential, essential that we start working on these things, we look at this in the, and give it the attention that it deserves. Because if AI is truly learning from us, we need to ask ourselves what kind of teachers are we being? And then that leads me to, you know, the biggest question, what kind of future are we building? We need to build a society that is ethically aligned with technology and humans safely integrated in a trustworthy environment. We cannot fall into traps of bias anymore. We've learned our lessons. This brings me to like the forward stage of looking into the future. There have been whispers in the AI world that AGI may be coming sooner than we think. And AGI, which is artificial general intelligence, which is the next step in artificial intelligence, a step forward from large language models like ChatGPT. And so is super intelligence. These are heavier terms, and I urge you to read about these if you're interested in them. There are whispers that AGI is a lot closer than we think with AI agents entering the workflow this very year. We're having AI agents entering workflow which is something that's never really happened and we're already seeing that happen. So we start focusing on the principles of AI ethics if we wanna live in a safer society going forward. Because AI is not just a tool, it's a mirror. And we should be asking ourselves, what should it reflect and how and why? Thank you.